Jonathan in Michigan, who claims to have solid proof of God. So how you doing, Jonathan? You're on with Seth Andrews, the host of The Thinking Atheist, and Matt Delahunty. I'm doing good. How are you guys? I'm holding in there. So um, I have some evidence for the Bible. Um, if you look at the records for the past few years, there have been some archaeologists that found um, Jesus's tomb, and um, I think another person discovered his cross is still standing. So I want to know what you guys think of that. I think that's some pretty good evidence. You think that's pretty good evidence? So you think somebody actually found Jesus's tomb and that Jesus's cross is still standing? Did you? Can you tell me any more about this? Did you bother to look up to see if the thing that you heard on the internet is even true? Because it's not. Um, yeah, I did look into it. It can't be disproven, so I don't see why it would be false. What do you mean it can't be disproven? It's not true. The statement is someone discovered Jesus' tomb. That's not true. It's not true until somebody actually identifies and we, we have sufficient evidence to conclude that that's the case, so it's not true. It's also not true that Jesus' cross is still standing. Um, so, I, you know, the fact that somebody claims something like that, I mean, th there's very little I can say here other than you read something on the internet and that's not enough. What, what is the evidence for this? I'm waiting on a specific source. Like a guy once said, and I heard the words, I think, these are not really the declarations rooted in evidence. I'd like to know who's your source specifically? Who found this stuff and where geographically can we find them? I'm not sure who exactly found this evidence, but um, it was discovered in Jerusalem. And I'd go on faith instead of evidence. Okay, well, we're not, we're not interested it. in that. We're not interested in people who are just going to take stuff on faith because is could could I just take it on faith that you're wrong and that there is no God and that white people are superior to black people and that men are superior to women? Could I take all of those things on faith? Um, maybe it depends what on mean, maybe. Uh, context. Of what, you're what do you mean? Maybe faith. couldn't I just you say that you don't care about evidence? You only take it on faith, and I'm saying couldn't I believe those things based on faith without evidence? Isn't that possible? Uh, no. It's not possible for me just to believe that men are superior to women based on faith without evidence. That's not possible. I guess I'll have to think about that a little bit. You probably should. You should probably should think about several other things because at this point, all what we care about is evidence. You called in specifically. The call screener says here, you are aware of solid proof of God historic evidence, and now you tell us you don't care about evidence, you're just taking it on faith. Are you even serious, Jonathan? Did you just call in to hear yourself talk on the TV and you're just making shit up? No, I thought the Bible would be good evidence for God. And since he's already no, 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 you didn't talk about the Bible, though. You think that, do you really think that a 2,000-year-old wooden cross is still standing somewhere and that nobody, it, that this had to be discovered? Well, I'd have to go see it for myself, but I think I'm going to trust the archaeologists on this. Okay, first of all, you don't even know that you're trusting an archaeologist or that any archaeologist reported this. I'm asking you a very simple question. Let's assume that Jesus' cross has been standing this entire time. Do you really think this is something that would have had to been discovered? You don't think people would have been pointing to this for the last 2,000 years saying, yep, that's Jesus' cross, that's, just, that's it, there it is, right there on that hill, Golgotha. Hey, we know where this happened, Jesus' cross, right there. You think this had to be discovered? That's actually a pretty good point. I didn't think about. Yeah. What do you think the likelihood that a 2,000 year old piece of wood, that if, if it actually happened, and if so we don't even know that Jesus existed, we don't know that he was crucified. What well, do you think all the I know is that if the cross, well, first of all, if the cross defied it. It, it, 2,000 years of, you know, deterioration, weathering, insects, <laughs> yeah, let's say that this is the most hearty wood. All right. All right. Fine. If that existed and you could prove it was. Christ crossed, there would already be like a bed and breakfast built, or right. like there would be an entire, like we know the, that the Holy Lands is already sort of a tourist Mecca around the story of Jesus, but we know that if Jesus's tomb had been discovered and the cross had been verified, 
that it would be it would make Las Vegas look like bug shooter Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? This would be like Mecca. People would have come and it would have been this big thing. Not and only when that. you invoke archaeologists without giving any specific names, credentials, peer review, this is yeah, this is why we can't take you seriously. This I mean, is, it's just, it's literally dissipating. The words are just disappearing as they come out of your mouth. We're going to need more. Okay. I tell you what, Jonathan, have you got a web browser open? Uh, no, I do not at the moment. And so anybody in the world, if you go to Google right now and you type in, is Jesus's cross still standing? The first result is about a cross of Jesus tornado uh, still stands after a tornado hits Texas, then it's all about that. There's nothing that, like, do you think that if, if Jesus' cross was still standing and you typed into Google, is Jesus' cross still standing, that you would get results about a tornado striking a cro cross of Jesus in, in Oklahoma or Dallas instead of the actual cross of Jesus? Like, you're, you need to work on your Google foo a little bit. So when you hear something on the internet, first of all, let me give you, let me give you some tips. Go to Snopes, S N O P E S dot com because that's a, that's a good debunking site um type your question that you want the, the evidence that you think you have into google and just see what kind of results i get because it's not realistic now nobody's found jesus's tomb there are people who think they have or haven't how would you ever dem like let's say we found a tomb jonathan how would you demonstrate that it's jesus's do we have any dna to compare um DNAs, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we have no evidence for that. You have, we um, have no evidence for DNA. Well, we can't we can't see it. So how how do we know that it exists? So I, mean, I hang on. Are you talking about DNA just in general? You don't believe that DNA exists, or are you talking about we don't have Jesus's DNA? I'm not saying that I don't believe it exists. We just don't have evidence for it because we can't see it. Um, so you don't think sequencing the human genome ever happened? No. Okay. Well, then you should write to Francis Collins, the former head of the Human Genome Project, who, by the way, is a Christian and believes in, in Christ because he saw a waterfall frozen into three. Um, but he has argued on behalf of this. And I, right now you're just in a position where you... Call, you, you called us and said you had evidence. Then you said you take everything on faith. And on faith now, you're writing off DNA. You're writing off the entirety of genetics because you think you can't see it. Jonathan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show how much respect that I have for you and most people on the planet. I think you're full of shit. I think you're making stuff up right now and calling in just to see how long you can, you can do this and make it go along. Because I genuinely don't encounter people who say, I don't care about evidence, I just take things on faith. And DNA, I'm not going to believe that because we can't see it. I, I find you beyond ridiculous. So thanks for calling. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you do this every week? <laughs> I don't do that every week. It's just, you it's do just this really every frustrating. I, I, I just, as a matter of fact, I almost never do that. Oh, I mean, I, I, I totally get it. I mean, I know that occasionally you get some off the wall stuff, but you know, I, we just bounced around to so many odd places in the course of 10, 12 minutes. The idea that Christ's tomb, you're right. I mean, how in the world would you even ever verify that it was the tomb of Christ? When he was talking about the cross, I was reminded of an old X-Files episode where they, uh, the cross was actually embedded in the stone of a wall or building, as I recall, and they broke it open. And whoever carried the cross or the remnant of the cross into battle, even in the modern day, would be invincible. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, that'd be a great story. But of course, yeah. there's no evidence for the cross. Um, and then they hear that throughout history. People have been selling splinters supposedly from the original cross. I mean, that, that used to happen all the time. You know, here, here we're, we're going to sell these, these religious artifacts, including splinters from the cross. If Jesus' cross had been standing there, it would have to be like protected to keep people from going up and taking splinters off of it. And, and the tomb, it's like, how do you tell the tomb? But the, the problem here with Jonathan is on occasion, we will get prank callers. We, we're getting fewer and fewer, but I could be wrong. And it's very rare that I just call someone out like that. But... First of all, he was willing to listen and not interrupt. That makes me suspect that he isn't, in fact, calling to defend anything that he actually believes. That, that's already a problem. The second thing is the sort of flawed thinking that someone would have to have 
in order to just say, hey, I've got evidence. I don't care about evidence. I'm taking it on faith. I heard some archaeologist found Jesus' tomb in a cross. The degree to which a brain has to be broken to accept all that means it's unlikely you would be able to find the phone number for this show and call it. So I'm pretty sure that was just a punk prank call. My favorite cross story is those cats in the Philippines that have themselves crucified every single year. Right yeah. to show their gratitude to God. And the whole time I'm thinking, have you even read your Bible? Right. <laughs> the whole idea of the blood atonement was that so you don't have to get pinned up every freaking Easter. There's one guy that's done it for 30 years. Yeah. You, you wrote know. about it's, that in Sacred Cows, didn't you? I wrote about the, I got a whole book. It's called, uh, it's got Jesus. It says there's an uh, artist illustration of Jesus holding out three nails. And he said, hey, can you put me up for the night? <laughs> <laughs> which is an old gag, but, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I don't really understand, you know, when you think about the cross and what it represents in terms of human suffering and torture, that's where we get the word excruciating. It actually comes from the word crucifixion. Yeah. You talk about this sort of unimaginable, indescribable pain and agony that you would suffer. And the idea now that people are wearing this around their necks and, you know, their earrings, t-shirts and, bumper stickers with the cross with this execution torture execution method to me just seems so bizarre it didn't when i was a believer it certainly no, does now it didn't when i was a believer either and and actually i listened to bill hicks um and one of bill hicks is one of my favorite routines from bill hicks was talking about all these christians walking around with crosses on their necks and it'd be like going up to to jackie o with like a little rifle pendant on your neck just thinking of john jackie just thinking of john yeah yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorite bits from Bill Hicks because it, it really is there. There's kind of this death cult thing to this that it's just, you know, if you think about religions like Christianity, et cetera, what you've got is blood magic, although it's kind of disguised. It's not like it's not too well disguised because, you know, when they give them cures for I think it's cure for leprosy or something where you end up having to kill a bird and let the blood drip and do all this other stuff. So there's still blood, just raw blood stuff in there. But it's not any different from the the blood magic that was used in in various other you know animistic religions and shamanistic religions. It's just that at some point, while God really loves a good barbecue, He decided, hey, let's just barbecue Jesus once so we can stop barbecuing animals every weekend. Only yeah, blood magic describes barbecue. the crucifixion. I mean, yeah. you just described the crucifixion. Yep. Um, I don't know. A lot of that Old Testament stuff freaks me out. Like the the two goats, right? You take right. one goat and you transfer the sins of the tribe into the goat, and then you take it off into the wilderness to starve to death, presumptively. That's called the, the escape or scapegoats, where we right. get the word. And then the second goat, well, now it's full of sin as well, so you execute it to, so that the aroma of the blood and flesh and whatever will please God. I mean, it's just disturbing. Just a similar thing with chickens, but... Actually, that's going to take us in a way. <laughs> Sorry, I went off on a tangent. No, it's the perfect segue to our right. next 